this is the introduction to harold the dauntless by sir walter scott this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by nathan at antipodean writer dot wordpress dot com harold the dauntless by sir walter scott introduction there is a mood of mind we all have known on drowsy eve or dark and lowering day when the tired spirits lose their sprightly tone and nought can chase the lingering hours away dull on our soul falls fancy's dazzling ray and wisdom holds his steadier torch in vain obscured the painting seems mistuned the lay nor dare we of our listless load complain for who for sympathy may seek that cannot tell of pain the jolly sportsman knows such dreary hood when bursts in deluge the autumnal rain clouding that morn which threats the heathcock's brood of such in summer's drought the angler's plain who hope the soft mild southern shower in vain but more than all the discontented fair whom father stern and sterner aunt restrain from county ball or race occurring rare while all her friends around their vestments gay prepare ennui or as our mothers called the spleen to thee we owe full many a rare device thine is the sheaf of painted cards i ween the rolling billiard ball the rattling dice the turning lathe for framing gimcrack nice the amateur's blotch palais thou mayst claim retort and air-pump threatening frogs and mice murders disguised by philosophic name and much of trifling grave and much of buxom game then of the books to catch thy drowsy glance compiled what bard the catalogue may quote plays poems novels never read but once but not of such the tale fair edgeworth wrote that bears thy name and is thine antidote and not of such the strain my thompson sung delicious dreams inspiring by his note what time to indolence his harp he strung oh might my lay be ranked that happier list among each hath his refuge whom thy cares assail for me i love my study fire to trim and con write vacantly some idle tale displaying on the couch each listless limb till on the drowsy page the lights grow dim and doubtful slumber half supplies the theme while antique shapes of night and giant grim damsel and dwarf in long procession gleam and the romance's tale becomes the reader's dream tis thus my malady i well may bear albeit outstretched like pope's own paradel upon the rack of a too easy chair and find to cheat the time a powerful spell in old romance of errantry that tell or later legends of the fairy folk or oriental tale of aphrite fell of genii talisman and broad-winged rock though taste may blush and frown and sober reason mock oft at such season too will rhymes unsought arrange themselves in some romantic lay the which as things unfitting graver thought are burnt or blotted on some wiser day these few survive and proudly let me say court not the critic's smile nor dread his frown they well may serve to while an hour away nor does the volume ask for more renown than ennui's yawning smile what time she drops it down end of introduction recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter dot wordpress dot com this is canto first of harold the dauntless by sir walter scott 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com List to the valorous deeds that were done by Harold the Dauntless, Count Whittakin's son. Count Whittakin came of a regal strain and roved with his Norsemen the land and the main. Woe to the realms which he coasted, for there was shedding of blood and rending of hair rape of maiden and slaughter of priest gathering of ravens and wolves to the feast when he hoisted his standard black before him was battle behind him rack and he burned the churches that heathen dame to light his band to their barks again on erin's shores was his outrage known the winds of france had his banners blown little was there to plunder yet still his pirates had forayed on scottish hill but upon merry england's coast more frequent he sailed for he won the most so wide and so far his ravage they knew if a sail but gleamed white gainst the welkin blue trumpet and bugle to arms did call burghers hastened to man the wall peasants fled inland his fury to scape beacons were lighted on headland and cape bells were tolled out and i as they rung fearful and faintly the grey brothers sung bless us saint mary from flood and from fire from famine and pest and count whittakin's ire he liked the wealth of fair england so well that he sought in her bosom as native to dwell he entered the humber in fearful hour and disembarked with his danish power three earls came against him with all their train two hath he taken and one hath he slain count whittakind left the humber's rich strand and he wasted and warred in northumberland but the saxon king was a sire in age weak in battle in council sage peace of that heathen leader he sought gifts he gave and quiet he bought and the count took upon him the peaceable style of a vassal and liegeman of britain's broad isle time will rust the sharpest sword time will consume the strongest cord that which moulders hemp and steel mortal arm and nerve must feel of the danish band whom count whittakin led many waxed aged and many were dead himself found his armour full weighty to bear wrinkled his brows grew and hoary his hair he leaned on a staff when his step went abroad and patient his palfrey when steed he bestrode as he grew feebler his wildness ceased he made himself peace with prelate and priest made his peace and stooping his head patiently listed the council they said saint cuthbert's bishop was holy and grave wise and good was the counsel he gave thou hast murdered robbed and spoiled time it is thy poor soul were assoiled priests didst thou slay and churches burn time it is now to repentance to turn fiends hast thou worshipped with fiendish right leave now the darkness and wend into light o oh, while life and space are given turn thee yet and think of heaven that stern old heathen his head he raised and on the good prelate he steadfastly gazed give me broad lands on the weir and the tyne my faith i will leave and i'll cleave unto thine broad lands he gave him on tyne and weir to be held of the church by bridle and spear part of monk wearmouth of tyndale part to better his will and to soften his heart count whittakind was a joyful man 
less for the faith than the lands that he wan the high church of durham is dressed for the day the clergy are ranked in their solemn array there came the count in a bearskin warm leaning on hilda his concubine's arm he kneeled before saint cuthbert's shrine with patience unwonted at rites divine he abjured the gods of heathen race and he bent his head at the font of grace but such was the grisly old proselyte's look that the priest who baptized him grew pale and shook and the old monks muttered beneath their hood of a stem so stubborn can never spring good up then arose that grim convertite homeward he hied him when ended the rite the prelate in honour will with him ride and feast in his castle on tyne's fair side banners and banderoles danced in the wind monks rode before them and spearmen behind onward they passed till fairly did shine pennon and cross on the bosom of time and full in front did that fortress lower in darksome strength with its buttress and tower at the castle gate was young harold there count Whittikin's only offspring and heir young harold was feared for his hardihood his strength of fame and his fury of mood rude he was and wild to behold wore neither collar nor bracelet of gold cap of vair nor rich array such as should grace that festal day his doublet of bull's hide was all unbraced uncovered his head and his sandal unlaced his shaggy black locks on his brow hung low and his eyes glanced through them a swarthy glow a danish club in his hand he bore the spikes were clotted with recent gore at his back a she-wolf and her wolf cubs twain in the dangerous chase that morning slain rude was the greeting his father he made none to the bishop thus while he said what priest-led hypocrite art thou with thy humbled look and thy monkish brow like a shaveling who studies to cheat his vow canst thou be witticand the waster known royal eric's fearless son haughty gun hilda's haughtier lord who won his bride by the axe and sword from the shrine of saint peter the chalice who tore and melted to bracelets for freer and thor with one blow of his gauntlet who burst the skull before odin's stone of the mountain bull then ye worshipped with rites that to war gods belong with the deed of the brave and the blow of the strong and now in thine age to dotage sunk wilt thou patter thy crimes to a shaven monk lay down thy mail shirt for clothing of hair fasting and scourge like a slave wilt thou bear or at best be admitted in slothful bower to batten with priest and with paramour oh out upon thine endless shame each scald's high harp shall blast thy fame and thy son will refuse thee a father's name ireful waxed old witikin's look his faltering voice with fury shook hear me harold of hardened heart stubborn and wilful ever thou wert thine outrage insane i command thee to cease fear my wrath and remain at peace just is the debt of repentance i've paid richly the church has a recompense made and the truth of her doctrines i prove with my blade but reckoning to none of my actions i owe and least to my son 
such accounting will show why speak i to thee of repentance or truth who never from thy childhood knew reason or ruth hence to the wolf and the bear in her den these are thy mates and not rational men grimly smiled harold and coldly replied we must honour our sires if we fear when they chide for me i am yet what thy lessons have made i was rocked in a buckler and fed from a blade an infant was taught to clasp hands and to shout from the roofs of the tower when the flame had broke out in the blood of slain foemen my finger to dip and tinge with its purple my cheek and my lip tis thou knowest not truth thou hast bartered in eld for a price the brave faith that thine ancestors held when this wolf and the carcass he flung on the plain shall awake and give food to her nurslings again the face of his father will harold review till then aged heathen young christian adieu priest monk and prelate stood aghast as through the pageant the heathen passed across bearer out of his saddle he flung laid his hand on the pommel and into it sprung loud was the shriek and deep the groan when the holy sign on the earth was thrown the fierce old count unsheathed his brand but the calmer prelate stayed his hand let him pass free heaven knows its hour but he must own repentance power pray and weep and penance bear ere he hold land by the tyne and the ware thus in scorn and in wrath from his father is gone young harold the dauntless count Whittikin's son i was the feasting in Whittikin's hall revelled priests soldiers and pagans and all and even the good bishop was fain to endure the scandal which time and instruction might cure it were dangerous he deemed at the first to restrain in his wine and his wassail a half christened dame the mead flowed around and the ale was drained dry wild was the laughter the song and the cry with kyrie eleison came clamorously in the war songs of danesmen norwayan and finn till man after man the contention gave awe outstretched on the rushes that strewed the hall floor and the tempest within having ceased its wild rout gave place to the tempest that thundered without apart from the wassail in turret alone lay flaxen-haired gunner old ermengarde's son in the train of lord harold that page was the first for harold in childhood had ermengarde nursed and grieved was young gunnar his master should roam unhoused and unfriended an exile from home he heard the deep thunder the plashing of rain he saw the red lightning through shot hole and pane and oh said the page on the shelterless wold lord harold is wandering in darkness and cold what though he was stubborn and wayward and wild he endured me because i was ermengarde's child and often from dawn till the set of the sun in the chase by his stirrup unbidden i run i would i were older and knighthood could bear i would soon quit the banks of the tyne and the wear for my mother's command with her last parting breath bade me follow her nursling in life and to death it pours and it thunders it lightens amain as if Locke the destroyer had burst from his chain accursed by the church and expelled by his sire nor christian nor dane give him shelter or fire and this tempest what mortal may houseless endure unaided unmantled he dies on the moor whatever comes of gunnar he tarries not here he leapt from his couch and he grasped to his spear sought the hall of the feast undisturbed by his tread the wassailers slept fast as the sleep of the dead 
ungrateful and bestial his anger broke forth to forget mid your goblets the pride of the north and you ye cowed priests who have plenty in store must give gunner for ransom a palfrey and oar then heeding full little of ban or of curse he has seized on the prior of jorvaux's purse saint menholt's abbot next morning has missed his mantle deep furred from the cape to the wrist the seneschal's keys from his belt he has ta'en well drenched on that eve was old hildebrand's brain to the stable yard he made his way and mounted the bishop's palfrey gay castle and hamlet behind him has cast and right on his way to the moorland has passed saw snorted the palfrey unused to face a weather so wild at so rash a pace so long he snorted so long he neighed there answered a steed that was bound beside and the red flash of lightning showed there where lay his master lord harold outstretched on the clay up he started and thundered out stand and raised the club in his deadly hand the flaxen-haired gunner his purpose told showed the palfrey and proffered the gold back back and home thou simple boy thou canst not share my grief or joy have i not marked thee wail and cry when thou hast seen a sparrow die and canst thou as my follower should wade ankle deep through foeman's blood dare mortal and immortal foe the gods above the fiends below and man on earth more hateful still the very fountain head of ill desperate of life and careless of death lover of bloodshed and slaughter and scath such must thou be with me to roam and such thou canst not be back and home young gunner shook like an aspen bough as he heard the harsh voice and beheld the dark brow and half he repented his purpose and vow but now to draw back were bootless shame and he loved his master so urged his claim alas if my arm and my courage be weak bear with me a while for old ermengarde's sake nor deem so lightly of gunner's faith as to fear he would break it for peril of death have i not risked it to fetch thee this gold this surcoat and mantle to fence thee from cold and did i bear a baser mind what lot remains if i stay behind the priest's revenge thy father's wrath a dungeon and a shameful death with gentler look lord harold eyed the page then turned his head aside and either a tear did his eyelash stain or it caught a drop of the passing rain art thou an outcast then quoth he the meter page to follow me twere bootless to tell what climes they sought ventures achieved and battles fought how oft with few how oft alone fierce harold's arm the field hath won men swore his eye that flashed so red when each other glance was quenched with dread or oft a light of deadly flame that never from mortal courage came those limbs so strong that mood so stern that loved the couch of heath and fern afar from hamlet tower and town more than to rest on driven down that stubborn frame that sullen mood men deemed must come of aught but good and they whispered the great master fiend was at one with harold the dauntless count Whittigan's son years after years had gone and fled 
the good old prelate lies lapped in lead in the chapel still is shown his sculptured form on a marble stone with staff and ring and scapulaire and folded hands in the act of prayer saint cuthbert's mitre is resting now on the haughty saxon bold oldinger's brow the power of his crozier he loved to extend over whatever would break or whatever would bend and now hath he clothed him in cope and in pall and the chapter of durham has met at his call and hear ye not brethren the proud bishop said that our vassal the danish count witikens dead all his gold and his goods hath he given to holy church for the love of heaven and hath founded a chantry with stipend and dole that priests and that beadsmen may pray for his soul harold his son is wandering abroad dreaded by man and abhorred by god meet it is not that such should err the lands of the church on the tyne and the ware and at her pleasure her hallowed hands may now resume these wealthy lands answered good eustace a canon old harold is tameless and furious and bold ever renown blows a note of fame and a note of fear when she sounds his name much of bloodshed and much of scathe have been their lot who have waked his wrath leave him these lands and lordships still heaven in its hour may change his will but if reft of gold and of living bear and evil counsellor is despair more had he said but the prelate frowned and murmured his brethren who sate around and with one consent have they given their doom that the church should the lands of saint cuthbert resume so willed the prelate and canon and dean gave to his judgment their loud amen end of canto first recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com this is canto second of harold the dauntless by sir walter scott this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com tis merry in greenwood thus runs the old lay in the gladsome month of lively may when the wild bird's song on stem and spray invites to forest bower then rears the ash his airy crest then shines the birch in silver vest and the beech in glistening leaves is dressed and dark between shows the oak's proud breast like a chieftain's frowning tower though a thousand branches join their screen yet the broken sunbeams glance between and tip the leaves with lighter green with brighter tints the flower dull is the heart that loves not then the deep recess of the wild wood glen where roe and red deer find sheltering den when the sun is in his power less merry perchance is the fading leaf that follows so soon on the gathered sheaf when the greenwood loses the name silent is then the forest bound save the redbreast's note and the rustling sound of frost-nipped leaves that are dropping round or the deep-mouthed cry of the distant hound that opens on his game yet then too i love the forest wide whether the sun in splendour ride and gild its many coloured side or whether the soft and silvery haze in vapoury folds over the landscape strays and half involves the woodland maze like an early widow's veil 
where wimpling tissue from the gaze the form half hides and half betrays of beauty wan and pale fair metalul was a woodland maid her father a rover of greenwood shade by forest statutes undismayed who lived by bow and quiver well known was wolfstane's archery by merry time both on moor and lee through wooded weardale's glens so free well beside stanhope's wildwood tree and well on ganless river yet free though he trespassed on woodland game more known and more feared was the wizard fame of jutter of rookhope the outlaw's dame feared when she frowned was her eye of flame more feared when in wrath she laughed for then twas said more fatal true to its dread aim her spell glance flew than when from wolfstane's bended yew sprung forth the grey goose shaft yet had this fierce and dreaded pair so heaven decreed a daughter fair none brighter crowned the bed in britain's bounds of peer or prince nor hath perchance a lovelier since in this fair isle been bred and nought of fraud or ire or ill was known to gentle meta lil a simple maiden she the spell's in dimpled smile that lie and a downcast blush and the darts that fly with the sidelong glance of a hazel eye were her arms and witchery so young so simple was she yet she scarce could childhood's joys forget and still she loved in secret set beneath the greenwood tree to plait the rushy coronet and braid with flowers her locks of jet as when in infancy yet could that heart so simple prove the early dawn of stealing love ah gentle maid beware the power who now so mild a guest gives dangerous yet delicious zest to the calm pleasures of thy breast will soon a tyrant over the rest let none his empire share one morn in kirtle green arrayed deep in the wood the maiden strayed and where a fountain sprung she sate her down unseen to thread the scarlet berries mimic braid and while the beads she strung like the blithe lark whose carol gay gives a good morrow to the day so lightsomely she sung lord william was born in gilded bower the heir of wilton's lofty tower yet better loves lord william now to roam beneath wild rookhope's brow and william has lived where ladies fair with gauds and jewels deck their hair yet better loves the dewdrops still that pearl the locks of metalil the pious palmer loves i wis saint cuthbert's hallowed beads to kiss but i though simple girl i be might have such homage paid to me for did lord william see me suit this necklace of the bramble's fruit he fain but must not have his will would kiss the beads of metalil my nurse has told me many a tale our vows of love are weak and frail my mother says that courtly youth by rustic maid means seldom sooth what should they mean it cannot be that such a warning's meant for me for nought o oh, nought of fraud or ill can william mean to metalil sudden she stops and starts to feel a weighty hand a glove of steel upon her shrinking shoulders laid fearful she turned and saw dismayed a knight in plate and mail arrayed his crest and bearing worn and frayed his surcoat toiled and riven formed like that giant race of yore whose long continued crimes outwore the sufferance of heaven 
stern accents made his pleasure known though then he used his gentlest tone maiden he said sing forth thy glee start not sing on it pleases me secured within his powerful hold to bend her knee her hands to fold was all the maiden might and oh forgive she faintly said the terrors of a simple maid if thou art mortal wight but if of such strange tales are told unearthly warrior of the wold thou comest to chide mine accents bold my mother jutta knows the spell at noon and midnight pleasing well the disembodied ear oh let her powerful charms atone for aught my rashness may have done and cease thy grasp of fear then laughed the knight his laughter's sound half in the hollow helmet drowned his barred visor then he raised and steady on the maiden gazed he smoothed his brows as best he might to the dread calm of autumn night when sinks the tempest roar yet still the cautious fisher's eye the clouds and fear the gloomy sky and all their barks on shore damsel he said be wise and learn matters of weight and deep concern from distant realms i come and wander along at length have planned in this my native northern land to seek myself a home nor that alone a mate i seek she must be gentle soft and meek no lordly dame for me myself am something rough of mood and feel the fire of royal blood and therefore do not hold it good to match in my degree then since coy maidens say my face is harsh my form devoid of grace for a fair lineage to provide tis meet that my selected bride in lineaments be fair i love thine well till now i near looked patient on a face of fear but now that tremulous sob and tear become thy beauty rare one kiss nay damsel coy it not and now go seek thy parents cot and say a bridegroom soon i come to woo my love and bear her home home sprung the maid without a pause as leveret scaped from greyhound's jaws but still she locked however distressed the secret in her boding breast dreading her sire who oft forbade her steps should stray to distant glade night came to her accustomed nook her distaff aged jutta took and by the lamp's imperfect glow rough wolfstain trimmed his shafts and bow sudden and clamorous from the ground up started slumbering bratch and hound loud knocking next the lodge alarms and wolfstain snatches at his arms when open flew the yielding door and that grim warrior pressed the floor all peace be here what none replies dismiss your fears and your surprise tis i that maid hath told my tale or trembler did thy courage fail it reeks not it is i demand fair metalil in marriage band harold the dauntless i whose name is brave men's boast and caitiff's shame the parents sought each other's eyes with awe resentment and surprise wolfstain to quarrel prompt began the stranger's size and thews to scan but as he scanned his courage sunk and from unequal strife he shrunk then forth to blight and blemish flies the harmful curse from jutta's eyes yet fatal howsoever the spell on harold innocently fell and disappointment and amaze were in the witch's wildered gaze but soon the wit of woman woke 
and to the warrior mild she spoke her child was all too young a toy the refuge of a maiden coy again a powerful baron's heir claims in her heart an interest fair a trifle whisper in his ear that harold is a suitor here baffled at length she sought delay would not the night till morning stay late was the hour he there might rest till morn their lodge's honoured guest such were her words her craft might cast her honoured guest should sleep his last no not to-night but soon he swore he would return nor leave them more the threshold then his huge stride crossed and soon he was in darkness lost appalled a while the parents stood then changed their fear to angry mood and foremost fell their words of ill on unresisting metalil was she not cautioned and forbid forewarned implored accused and chid and must she still to greenwood roam to marshal such misfortune home hence minion to thy chamber hence their prudence learn and penitence she went her lonely couch to steep in tears which absent lovers weep or if she gained a troubled sleep fierce harold's suit was still the theme and terror of her feverish dream scarce was she gone her dame and sire upon each other bent their ire a woodsman thou and hast a spear and couldst thou such an insult bear sullen he said a man contends with men a witch with sprites and fiends not to mere mortal wight belong yon gloomy brow and frame so strong but thou is this thy promise fair that your lord william wealthy heir to ulric baron of wittenly ware should metalil to altar bear do all the spells thou boastest as thine serve but to slay some peasant's kine his grain in autumn storms to steep or thorough fog and fen to sweep and hag ride some poor rustic sleep is such mean mischief worth the fame of sorceress and witch's name fame which with all men's wish conspires with thy deserts and my desires to damn thy corpse to penal fires out on thee which a roint a roint what now shall put thy schemes in joint what save this trusty arrow's point from the dark dingle when it flies and he who meets it gasps and dies stern she replied i will not wage war with thy folly or thy rage but ere the morrow's sun below with stain of rookhope thou shalt know if i can venge me on a foe believe the while that whatsoe'er i spoke in ire of bow and spear it is not harold's destiny the death of pilford dear to die but he and thou and yon pale moon that shall be yet more pallid soon before she sink behind the dell thou she and harold too shall tell what jutter knows of charm or spell thus muttering to the door she bent her wayward steps and forth she went and left alone the moody sire to cherish or to slake his ire far faster than belonged to age has jutter made her pilgrimage a priest has met her as she passed and crossed himself and stood aghast she traced a hamlet not a cur his throat would ope his foot would stir by crouch by trembling and by groan they made her hated presence known but when she trode the sable fell where wilder sounds her way to tell for far was heard the fox's yell the black cock waked and faintly crew screamed over the moss the scared curlew where over the cataract the oak lay slant was heard the raven's croak the mountain cat which sought his prey glared screamed and started from her way such music cheered 
her journey lone to the deep dell and rocking stone there with unhallowed hymn of praise she called a god of heathen days from thy pomeranian throne hewn in rock of living stone where to thy godhead faithful yet bend esthonian fin and let and their swords in vengeance wet that shall make thine altars wet wet and red for ages more with the christians hated gore hear me sovereign of the rock hear me mighty zernibok mightiest of the mighty known here thy wonders have been shown hundred tribes in various tongue oft have here thy praises sung down that stone with runic seemed hundred victims blood hath streamed now one woman comes alone and but wets it with her own the last the feeblest of thy flock hear and be present zernibok hark he comes the night blast cold wild as sweeps along the wold the cloudless moon grows dark and dim and bristling hair and quaking limb proclaim the master demon nigh those who view his form shall die lo i stoop and veil my head thou who ridest the tempest dread shaking hill and rending oak spare me spare me zernibok he comes not yet shall cold delay thy votaress at her need repay thou shall i call thee god or fiend let others on thy mood attend with prayer and ritual jutta's arms are necromantic words and charms mine is the spell that uttered once shall wake thy master from his trance shake his red mansion house of pain and burst his seven times twisted chain so comest thou ere the spell is spoke i own thy presence zernibok daughter of dust the deep voice said shook while it spoke the veil for dread rocked on the base that massive stone the evil deity to own daughter of dust not mine the power thou seekest on harold's fatal hour twixt heaven and hell there is a strife waged for his soul and for his life and fain would we the combat win and snatch him in his hour of sin there is a star now rising red that threats him with an influence dread woman thine arts of malice wet to use the space before it set involve him with the church in strife push on adventurous chance his life ourself will in the hour of need as best we may thy counsels speed so ceased the voice for seven leagues round each hamlet started at the sound but slept again as slowly died its thunders on the hill's brown side and is this all said jutta stern that thou canst teach and i can learn hence to the land of fog and waste there fittest is thine influence placed thou powerless sluggish deity but never shall britain bend the knee again before so poor a god she struck the altar with her rod slight was the touch as when at need a damsel stirs her tardy steed but to the blow the stone gave place and starting from its balanced base rolled thundering down the moonlight dell re-echoed moorland rock and fell into the moonlight tarn it dashed their shores the sounding surges lashed and there was ripple rage and foam but on that lake so dark and lone placid and pale the moonbeam shone as jutta hide her home end of canto second recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter dot wordpress dot com this is canto third of harold the dauntless by sir walter scott this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by nathan at antipodeanwriter dot wordpress dot com
grey towers of durham there was once a time i viewed your battlements with such vague hope as brighton's life in its first dawning prime not that even then came within fancy's scope a vision vain of mitre throne or cope yet gazing on the venerable hall her flattering dreams would in perspective ope some reverend room some prebendary's store and thus hope me deceived as she deceiveth all well yet i love thy mixed and massive piles half church of god half castle gainst the scot and long to roam these venerable isles with records stored of deeds long since forgot there might i share my certes happier lot who leaves at will his patrimonial field to ransack every crypt and hallowed spot and from oblivion rend the spoils they yield restoring priestly chant and clang of knightly shield vain is the wish since other cares demand each vacant hour and in another clime but still that northern harp invites my hand which tells the wonder of thine earlier time and fain its numbers would i now command to paint the beauties of that dawning fair when harold gazing from its lofty stand upon the western heights of beaurepaire saw saxon yadmer's towers begirt by winding ware fair on the half-seen streams the sunbeams danced betraying it beneath the woodland bank and fair between the gothic turrets glanced broad lights and shadows fell on front and flank where tower and buttress rose in martial rank and girdled in the massive dungeon keep and from their circuit pealed over bush and bank the matin bell with summons long and deep and echo answered still with long resounding sweep the morning mists rose from the ground each merry bird awakened round as if in revelry afar the bugle's clanging sound called to the chase the lagging hound the gale breathed soft and free and seemed to linger on its way to catch fresh odours from the spray and waved it in its wanton play so light and gamesomely the scenes which morning beams reveal its sounds to hear its gales to feel in all their fragrance round him steal it melted harold's heart of steel and hardly wotting why he doffed his helmet's gloomy pride and hung it on a tree beside laid mace and falchion by and on the greensward sate him down and from his dark habitual frown relaxed his rugged brow whoever hath the doubtful task from that stern dame a boon to ask were wise to ask it now his place beside young gunnar took and marked his master's softening look and in his eyes dark mirror spied the gloom of stormy thoughts subside and cautious watched the fittest tide to speak a warning word so when the torrent's billows shrink the timid pilgrim on the brink waits long to see them wave and sink ere he dare brave the ford and often after doubtful pause his step advances or withdraws fearful to move the slumbering ire of his stern lord thus stood the squire till harold raised his eye that glanced as when athwart the shroud of the dispersing tempest cloud the bursting sunbeams fly arouse thee son of ermengarde offspring of prophetess and bard take harp and greet this lovely prime with some high strain of runic rhyme strong deep and powerful peal it round like that loud bell's sonorous sound yet wild by fits as when the lay of bird and bugle hail the day such was my grandsire eric's sport when dawn gleamed on his martial court Hamar the scald with harp's high sound summoned the chiefs who slept around couched on the spoils of wolf and bear they roused like lions from their lair then rushed 
in emulation forth to enhance the glories of the north proud eric mightiest of thy race where is thy shadowy resting-place in wild valhalla hast thou quaffed from foeman's skull methiglin draught or wanderest where thy khan was piled to frown over oceans wide and wild or have the milder christians given thy refuge in their peaceful heaven wherever thou art to thee are known our toils endured our trophies won our wars our wanderings and our woes he ceased and gunner's song arose hawk and osprey screamed for joy over the beetling cliffs of hoy crimson foam the beach overspread the heath was dyed with darker red when over eric ingwar's son dane and northman piled the stone singing wild the warsong stern rest thee dweller of the kern where eddying currents form and boil by bursa's burg and grimsay's isle the seaman sees a martial form half mingled with the mist and storm in anxious awe he bears away to moor his bark in stromna's bay and murmurs from the bounding stern rest thee dweller of the kern what cares disturb the mighty dead each honoured rite was duly paid no daring hand thy helm unlaced thy sword thy shield were near thee placed thy flinty couch no tear profaned without with hostile blood was stained within twas lined with moss and fern then rest thee dweller of the kern he may not rest from realms afar comes voice of battle and of war of conquest wrought with bloody hand on carmel's cliffs and jordan's strand when odin's warlike son could daunt the turbaned race of termagaunt peace said the knight the nobles scald our warlike father's deeds recalled but never strove to soothe the son with tales of what himself had done at odin's board the bard sits high whose harp never stooped to flattery but highest he whose daring lay hath dared unwelcome truths to say with doubtful smile young gunnar eyed his master's looks and nought replied but well that smile his master led to construe what he left unsaid is it to me thou timid youth thou fearest to speak unwelcome truth my soul no more thy censure grieves than frosts rob laurels of their leaves say on and yet beware the rude and wild distemper of my blood loath were i that mine ire should wrong the youth that bore my shield so long and who in service constant still though weak in frame art strong in will oh quoth the page even there depends my counsel there my warning tends oft seems as of my master's breast some demon were the sudden guest then at the first misconstrued word his hand is on the mace and sword from her firm seat his wisdom driven his life to countless dangers given oh would that gunnar could suffice to be the fiend's last sacrifice so that when glutted with my gore he fled and tempted thee no more then waved his hand and shook his head the impatient dame while thus he said profane not youth it is not thine to judge the spirit of our line the bold berserker's rage divine through whose inspiring deeds are wrought past human strength and human thought when full upon his gloomy soul the champion feels the influence roll he swims the lake he leaps the wall heeds not the depth nor plums the fall unshielded mailless on he goes singly against a host of foes their spears he holds like withered reeds their mail like maiden's silken weeds one against a hundred will he strive take countless wounds and yet survive then rush the eagles to his cry of slaughter and of victory and blood he quaffs like odin's bowl deep drinks his sword deep drinks his soul and all that meet him in his ire 
he gives to ruin rout and fire then like gorged lion seeks some den and couches till his man again thou knowest the signs of look and limb when gins that rage to overbrim thou knowest when i am moved and why and when thou seest me roll mine eye set my teeth thus and stamp my foot regard thy safety and be mute but else speak boldly out what air is fitting that a knight should hear i love thee youth thou lay has power upon my dark and sullen hour so christian monks are wont to say demons of old were charmed away then fear not i will rashly deem ill of thy speech whatever the theme as down some strait in doubt and dread the watchful pilot drops the lead and cautious in the midst to steer the shoaling channel sounds with fear so lest on dangerous ground he swerved the page his master's brow observed pausing at intervals to fling his hand on the melodious string and to his moody breast apply the soothing charm of harmony while hinted half and half expressed this warning song conveyed the rest ill fares the bark with tackle riven and ill when on the breakers driven ill when the storm sprite shrieks in air and the scared mermaid tears her hair but worse when on her helm the hand of some false traitor holds command ill fares the fainting palmer placed mid hebron's rocks or rana's waste ill when the scorching sun is high and the expected font is dry worse when his guide over sand and heath the barbarous copt has planned his death ill fares the knight with buckler cleft and ill when of his helm bereft ill when his steed to earth is flung or from his grasp his falchion wrung but worse if instant ruin token when he lists read by woman spoken how now fond boy canst thou think ill said harold of fair metalil she may be fair the page replied as through the strings he ranged she may be fair but yet he cried and then the strain he changed she may be fair he sang but yet far fairer have i seen than she for all her locks of jet and eyes so dark and sheen were i a danish knight in arms as one day i may be my heart should own no foreign charms a danish maid for me i love my father's northern land where the dark pine trees grow and the bold baltic's echoing strand looks over each grassy o i love to mark the lingering sun from denmark loath to go and leaving on the billows bright to cheer the short-lived summer night a path of ruddy glow but most the northern maid i love with breast like denmark's snow and form as fair as denmark's pine who loves with purple heath to twine her locks of sunny glow and sweetly blend that shade of gold with the cheek's rosy hue and faith might for her mirror hold that eye of matchless blue tis hers the manly sports to love that southern maiden's fear to bend the bow by stream and grove and lift the hunter's spear she can her chosen champion's flight with eye undazzled see clasp him victorious from the strife or on his corpse yield up her life a danish maid for me then smiled the dame thou canst so well the virtues of our maidens tell half could i wish my choice had been blue eyes and hair of golden sheen and lofty soul yet what of ill hast thou to charge on metalil nothing on her young gunner said but her base sire's ignoble trade her mother too the general fame hath given to jutta evil name and in her grey eye is a flame art cannot hide nor fear can tame that sordid woodman's peasant cot twice have thine honoured footsteps sought and twice returned with such ill reed as sent thee on some desperate deed thou errest jutta wisely said 
he that comes suitor to our maid ere linked in marriage should provide lands and a dwelling for his bride my father's by the tyne and where i have reclaimed oh all too dear and all too dangerous the prize even were it won young gunner cries and then this jutter's fresh device that thou shouldst seek a heathen dame from durham's priests a boon to gain when thou hast left their vassals slain in their own halls flashed harold's eye thundered his voice false page you lie the castle hall and tower is mine built by old Whittikind on time the wild cat will defend his den fights for her nest the timid wren and thinkest thou i'll forgo my right for dread of monk or monkish knight up and away that deepening bell doth of the bishop's conclave tell thither will i in manner due as jutta bade my claim to sue and if to write me they are loth then woe to church and chapter both now shift the scene and let the curtain fall and our next entry be saint cuthbert's hall end of canto third recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com this is canto fourth of harold the dauntless by sir walter scott this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com full many a bard hath sung the solemn gloom of the long gothic aisle and stone-ribbed roof over canoping shrine and gorgeous tomb carved screen and altar glimmering far aloof and blending with the shade a matchless proof of high devotion which hath now waxed cold yet legends say that luxury's brute hoof intruded oft within such sacred fold like step of bell's false priest tracked in his fame of old well pleased am i however that when the root of our rude neighbours whilom dined to come uncalled and eke unwelcome to sweep out and cleanse our chancel from the rags of rome they spoke not on our ancient fame the doom to which their bigot zeal gave over their own but spared the martyred saint and storied tomb though papal miracles had graced the stone and though the aisles still loved the organ's swelling tone and deem not though tis now my part to paint a prelate swayed by love of power and gold that all who wore the mitre of our saint like to ambitious oldinger i hold since both in modern times and days of old it sate on those whose virtues might atone their predecessors frailties trebly told matthew and morton we as such may own and such if fame speak truth the honoured barrington but now to earlier and to ruder times as subject meet i tune my ragged rhymes telling how fairly the chapter was met and rude and books in seemly order set huge brass clasped volumes which the hand of studious priest but rarely scanned now on fair carved desk displayed twas theirs the solemn scene to aid overhead with many a scutcheon graced and quaint devices interlaced a labyrinth of crossing rows the roof in lessening arches shows beneath its shade placed proud and high with footstool and with canopy sate oldinger and prelate never more haughty graced saint cuthbert's chair canons and deacons were placed below in due degree and lengthened row unmoved and silent each sat there like image in his oaken chair nor hand nor head nor foot they stirred nor lock of hair nor tress of beard and of their eyes severe alone the twinkle showed they were not stone the prelate was to speech addressed each head sunk reverent on each breast 
but ere his voice was heard without arose a wild tumultuous shout offspring of wonder mixed with fear such as in crowded streets we hear hailing the flames that bursting out attract yet scare the rabble rout ere it had ceased a giant hand shook oaken door and iron band till oak and iron both gave way clashed the long bolts the hinges bray and ere upon angel or saint they can call stands harold the dauntless in midst of the hall now serve ye my masters both rocket and rude from bishop with mitre to deacon with hood for here stands count harold old Whittingham's son come to sue for the lands which his ancestors won the prelate looked round him with sore troubled eye unwilling to grant yet afraid to deny while each canon and deacon who heard the dane speak to be safely at home would have fasted a week then oldinger roused him and answered again thou suest for a boon which thou canst not obtain the church hath no fiefs for an unchristened dane thy father was wise and his treasure hath given that the priests of a chantry might hymn him to heaven and the fiefs which willow he possessed as his due have lapsed to the church and been granted anew to anthony conyers and alberic vere for the service saint cuthbert's blessed banner to bear when the bands of the north come to foray the ware then disturb not our conclave with wrangling or blame but in peace and in patience pass hence as ye came loud laughed the stern pagan they're free from the care of thief and of service both conyers and vere six feet of your chancel is all they will need a buckler of stone and a coralette of lead o gunner the token and severed anew a head and a hand on the altar he threw then shuddered with terror both canon and monk they knew the glazed eye and the countenance shrunk and of anthony conyers the half grizzled hair and the scar on the hand of sir alberic there there was not a churchman or priest that was there but grew pale at the sight and betook him to prayer count harold laughed at their looks of fear was this the hand should your banner bear was that the head should wear the casque in battle at the church's task was it to such you gave the place of harold with the heavy mace find me between the wear and tyne a knight will wield this club of mine give him my fiefs and i will say there's wit beneath the cowl of grey he raised it rough with many a stain caught from crushed skull and spouting brain he wheeled it that it shrilly sung and the aisles echoed as it swung then dashed it down with sheer descent and split king osric's monument how like ye this music how trow ye the hand that can wield such a mace may be reft of its land no answer i spare ye a space to agree and saint cuthbert inspire you a saint if he be ten strides through your chancel ten strokes on your bell and again i am with you grave fathers farewell he turned from their presence he clashed the oak door and the clang of his stride died away on the floor and his head from his bosom the prelate uprears with a ghost seer's look when the ghost disappears ye priests of saint cuthbert now give me your reed for never of counsel had bishop more need were the arch fiend incarnate in flesh and in bone the language the look and the laugh were his own in the bounds of saint cuthbert there is not a knight dare confront in our quarrel yon goblin in fight then read me aright to his claim to reply tis unlawful to grant and tis death to deny on venison and malmy that morning had fed the cellar of the sooth twas thus that he said delay till to-morrow the chapters reply let the feast be spread fair and the wine be poured high if he's mortal he drinks if he drinks he is ours 
his bracelets of iron his bed in our towers this man had a laughing eye trust not friends when such you spy a beaker's depth he well could drain revel sport and jest amain the haunch of the deer and the grapes bright dye never bard loved them better than i but sooner than vinsouf filled me my wine passed me his jest and laughed at mine though the buck were of bear park of bordeaux the wine with the dullest hermit i'd rather dine on an oaten cake and a draught of the tine well wayne the leech spoke next he knew each plant that loves the sun and dew but special those whose juice can gain dominion over the blood and brain the peasant who saw him by pale moonbeam gathering such herbs by bank and stream deemed his thin form and soundless tread were those of wanderer from the dead then thy wine he said hath power our gyves are heavy strong our tower yet three drops from this flask of mine more strong than dungeons gyves or wine shall give him prison underground more dark more narrow more profound short reed good reed let harold have a dog's death and a heathen's grave i have lain on a sick man's bed watching for hours for the leech's tread as if i deemed that his presence alone were of power to bid my pain begone i have listed his words of comfort given as if to oracles from heaven i have counted his steps from my chamber door and blessed them when they were heard no more but sooner than walwain my sick couch should nigh my choice were by leechcraft unaided to die such service done in fervent zeal the church may pardon and conceal the doubtful prelate said but never the council ere the act should hear ansom of jarrow advise us now the stamp of wisdom is on thy brow thy days thy nights in cloister pent are still to mystic learning lent ansom of jarrow in thee is my hope thou well mayst give counsel to prelate or pope answered the prior tis wisdom's use still to delay what we dare not refuse ere granting the boon he comes hither to ask shape for the giant gigantic task let us see how a step so sounding can tread in paths of darkness danger and dread he may not he will not impugn our decree that calls but for proof of his chivalry and were guy to return or sir beavis the strong our wilds have adventure might cumber them long the castle of seven shields kind ansel no more the step of the pagan approaches the door the churchmen were hushed in his mantle of skin with his mace on his shoulder count harold strode in there was foam on his lips there was fire in his eye for chafed by attendance his fury was nigh o bishop he said dost thou grant me my claim or must i assert it by falchion and flame on thy suit gallant harold the bishop replied in accents which trembled we may not decide until proof of your strength and your valour we saw tis not that we doubt them but such is the law and would you sir prelate have harold make sport for the cows and the shavelings that herd in thy court say what shall he do from the shrine shall he tear the lead bier of thy patron and heave it in air and through the long chancel make cuthbert take wing with the speed of a bullet dismissed from his sling nay spare such probation the cellarer said from the mouth of our minstrels thy task shall be read while the wine sparkles high in the goblet of gold and the revel is loudest thy task shall be told and thyself gallant harold shall hearing it tell that the bishop his cows and his shavelings meant well 
loud revelled the guests and the goblets loud rang but louder the minstrel hugh Menyville sang and harold the hurry and pride of whose soul even when verging to fury owned music's control still bent on the harper his broad sable eye and often untasted the goblet passed by then wine or then wassail to him was more dear the minstrel's high tale of enchantment to hear and the bishop that day might of vinsulf complain that his art had but wasted his wine casks in vain the castle of the seven shields a ballad the druid urian had daughters seven their skill could call the moon from heaven so fair their forms and so high their fame that seven proud kings for their suitors came king Medor and rhys came from powis and wales unshorn was their hair and unpruned were their nails from strathclyde was ewan and ewan was lame and the red-bearded donald from galloway came lot king of loden was hunchbacked from youth dunmail of cumbria had never a tooth but adolf of bambro northumberland's heir was gay and was gallant was young and was fair there was strife amongst the sisters for each one would have for husband king adolf gallant and brave and envy bred hate and hate urged them to blows when the firm earth was cleft and the arch fiend arose he swore to the maidens their wish to fulfil they swore to the foe they would work by his will a spindle and distaff to each hath he given now hearken my spell said the outcast of heaven ye shall ply these spindles at midnight hour and for every spindle shall rise a tower where the right shall be feeble the wrong shall have power and there shall ye dwell with your paramour beneath the pale moonlight they sat on the wold and the rhymes which they chaunted must never be told and as the black wool from the distaff they sped with blood from their bosoms they moistened the thread as light danced the spindles beneath the cold gleam the castle arose like the birth of a dream the seven towers ascended like mist from the ground seven portals defend them seven ditches surround within that dread castle seven monarchs were wed but six of the seven ere the morning lay dead with their eyes all on fire and their daggers all red seven damsels surround the northumbrian's bed six kingly bridegrooms to death we have done six gallant kingdoms king adolf hath won six lovely brides all his pleasure to do or the bed of the seventh shall be husbandless too well chanced it that adolf the knight when he wed had confessed and had sained him ere born to his bed he sprung from the couch and his broadsword he drew and there the seven daughters of urian he slew the gate of the castle he bolted and sealed and hung over each archstone a crown and a shield to the cells of saint dunstan then wended his way and died in his cloister an anchorite grey seven monarchs wealth in that castle lies stoled the foul fiends brood over them like raven and toad whoever shall guess in these chambers within from curfew till matins that treasure shall win but manhood grows faint as the world waxes old there lives not in britain a champion so bold so dauntless of heart and so prudent of brain as to dare the adventure that treasure to gain the waste ridge of cheviot shall wave with the rye before the rude scots shall northumberland fly and the flint cliffs of bambro shall melt in the sun before that adventure be perilled and won and is this my probation wild harold he said within a lone castle to press a lone bed good even my lord bishop saint cuthbert to borrow 
the castle of seven shields receives me to-morrow end of canto fourth recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com This is Canto Fifth of Harold the Dauntless by Sir Walter Scott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com Denmark's sage courtier to her princely youth, granting his cloud an oozel or a wail, spoke though unwittingly a partial truth fantasy embroiders nature's veil the tints of ruddy eve or dawning pale of the swart thundercloud or silver haze are but the groundwork of the rich detail which fantasy with pencil wild portrays blending what seems and is in the rapt muse's gaze nor are the stubborn forms of earth and stone less to the sorceress's empire given for not with unsubstantial hues alone caught from the varying surge or vacant heaven from bursting sunbeam or from flashing leaven she limbs her pictures on the earth as air arise her castles and her car is driven and never gazed the eye on scene so fair but of its boasted charms gave fancy half the share up a wild pass went harold bent to prove humenival the adventure of thy lay gunnar pursued his steps in faith and love ever companion of his master's way midward there path a rock of granite grey from the adjoining cliff had made descent a barren mass yet with her drooping spray had a young birch tree crowned its battlement twisting her fibrous roots through cranny floor and rent this rock and tree could gunner's thought engage till fancy brought the teardrop to his eye and at his master asked the timid page what is the emblem that a bard should spy in that rude rock and its green canopy and harold said like to the helmet brave of warrior slain in fight it seems to lie and these same drooping boughs do over it wave not all unlike the plume his lady's favour gave ah no replied the page the ill-starred love of some poor maid is in the emblem shown whose fates are with some heroes interwove and rooted on a heart to love unknown and as the gentle dews of heaven alone nourish those drooping boughs and as the scathe of the red lightning rends both tree and stone so fares it with her unrequited faith her sole relief is tears her only refuge death thou art a fond fantastic boy harold replied to females coy yet prating still of love even so amid the clash of war i know thou lovest to keep afar though destined by thy evil star with one like me to rove whose business and whose joys are found upon the bloody battle-ground yet foolish trembler as thou art thou hast a nook of my rude heart and thou and i will never part harold would wrap the world in flame ere injury on gunnar came the grateful page made no reply but turned to heaven his gentle eye and clasped his hands as one who said my toils my wanderings are overpaid then in a gayer lighter strain compelled himself to speech again and as they flowed along his words took cadence soft and slow and liquid like dissolving snow they melted into song what though through fields of carnage wide i may not follow harold's stride yet who with faithful gunner's pride 
lord harold's feats can see and dearer than the couch of pride he loves the bed of grey wolf's hide when slumbering by lord harold's side in forest field or lee break off said harold in a tone where hurry and surprise were shown with some slight touch of fear break off we are not here alone a palmer form comes slowly on by cowl and staff and mantle known my monitor is near now mark him gunner heedfully he pauses by the blighted tree dost see him youth thou couldst not see when in the vale of galilee i first beheld his form nor when we met that other while in cephalonia's rocky isle before the fearful storm dost see him now the page distraught with terror answered i see nought and there is nought to see save that the oak's scathed boughs fling down upon the path a shadow brown that like a pilgrim's dusky gown waves with the waving tree count harold gazed upon the oak as if his eye-strings would have broke and then resolvedly said be what it will yon phantom grey nor heaven nor hell shall ever say that for their shadows from his way count harold turned dismayed i'll speak him though his accents fill my heart with that unwonted thrill which vulgar minds call fear i will subdue it forth he strode paused where the blighted oak tree showed its sable shadow on the road and folding on his bosom broad his arms said speak i hear the deep voice said o wild of will furious thy purpose to fulfil heart seared and unrepentant still how long o harold shall thy tread disturb the slumbers of the dead each step in thy wild way thou makest the ashes of the dead thou wakest and shout in triumph over thy path the things of bloodshed and of wrath in this thine hour yet turn and hear for life is brief and judgment near then ceased the voice the dame replied in tones where awe and inborn pride for mastery strove in vain ye chide the wolf for ravaging the flock or with its hardness taunt the rock i am as they my danish strain sends streams of fire through every vein amid thy realms of gal and ghost say is the fame of eric lost or witikins the waster known where fame or spoil was to be won whose galleys never bore off ashore they left not black with flame he was my sire and sprung of him that rover merciless and grim can i be soft and tame part hence and with my crimes no more upbraid me i am that waster's son and am but what he made me the phantom groaned the mountain shook around the fawn and wild doe started at the sound the gorse and fern did wildly round them wave as if some sudden storm the impulse gave all thou hast said is truth yet on the head of that bad sire let not the charge be laid that he like thee with unrelenting pace from grave to cradle ran the evil race relentless in his avarice and ire churches and towns he gave to sword and fire shed blood like water wasted every land like the destroying angels burning brand fulfilled whatsoever of ill might be invented yes all these things he did he did but he repented perchance it is part of his punishment still that his offspring pursues his example of ill but thou when thy tempest of wrath shall next shake thee gird thy loins for resistance my son and awake thee if thou yieldest to thy fury how tempted soever 
the gate of repentance shall ope for thee never he is gone said lord harold and gazed as he spoke there is nought on the path but the shade of the oak he is gone whose strange presence my feeling oppressed like the night hag that sits on the slumberer's breast my heart beats as thick as a fugitive's tread and cold dews drop from my brow and my head ho oh, gunner the flasket yon almoner gave he said that three drops would recall from the grave for the first time count harold owns leechcraft as power or his courage to aid lacks the juice of a flower the page gave the flasket which Wayne had filled with the juice of wild roots that his heart had distilled so baneful their influence on all that had breath one drop had been frenzy and two had been death harold took it but drank not for jubilee shrill and music and clamour were heard on the hill and down the steep pathway over stock and over stone the train of a bridal came blithesomely on there was song there was pipe there was timbrel and still the burden was joy to the fair metalil harold might see from his high stance himself unseen that train advance with mirth and melody on horse and foot a mingled throng measuring their steps to bridal song and bridal minstrelsy and ever when the blithesome rout lent to the song their choral shout redoubling echoes rolled about while echoing cave and cliff sent out the answering symphony of all those mimic notes which dwell in hollow rook and sounding dell joy shook his torch above the band by many a various passion fanned as elemental sparks can feed on essence pure and coarsest weed gentle or stormy or refined joy takes the colours of the mind lightsome and pure but unrepressed he fired the bridegroom's gallant breast more feebly strove with maiden fear yet still joy glimmered through the tear on the bride's blushing cheek that shows like dewdrop on the budding rose while wolfstein's gloomy smile declared the glee that selfish avarice shared and pleased revenge and malice high joy's semblance took in jutter's eye on dangerous adventure sped the witch deemed harold with the dead for thus that morn her demon said if ere the set of sun be tied the knot twixt bridegroom and his bride the dane shall have no power of ill over william and over metalil and the pleased witch made answer then must harold have passed from the paths of men evil repose may his spirit have may hemlock and mandrake find root in his grave may his death sleep be dogged by dreams of dismay and his waking be worse at the answering day such was their various mood of glee blent in one shout of ecstasy but still when joy is brimming highest of sorrow and misfortune nighest of terror with her ague cheek and lurking danger sages speak these haunt each path but chief they lay their snares beside the primrose way thus found that bridal band their path beset by harold in his wrath trembling beneath his maddening mood high on a rock the giant stood his shout was like the doom of death spoke over their heads that passed beneath his destined victims might not spy the reddening terrors of his eye the frown of rage that writhed his face the lip that foamed like boars in chase but all could see and seeing all bore back to shun the threatened fall the fragment which their giant foe rent from the cliff and heaved the throw backward they bore yet are there two for battle who prepare no pause of dread lord william knew ere his good blade was bare and wolfstain bent his fatal yew and ere the silken cord he drew as hurled from hecla's thunder flew that ruin through the air 
Full on the outlaw's front it came, And all that late had human name, And human face, and human frame, That lived and moved, and had free will To choose the path of good or ill, Is to its reckoning gone and nought of wolfstain rests behind save that beneath that stone half buried in the dinted clay a red and shapeless mass there lay of mingled flesh and bone as from the bosom of the sky the eagle darts amain three bounds from yonder summit high placed harold on the plain as the scared wild fowl scream and fly so fled the bridal train as gainst the eagle's peerless might the noble falcon dares the fight but dares the fight in vain so fought the bridegroom from his hand the dane's rude mace has struck his brand its glittering fragments strew the sand its lord lies on the plain now heaven take noble william's part and melt that yet unmelted heart or ere his bridal hour depart the hapless bridegroom's slain count harold's frenzied rage is high there is a death fire in his eye deep furrows on his brow are trenched his teeth are set his hand is clenched the foam upon his lip is white his deadly arm is up to smite but as the mace aloft he swung to stop the blow young gunner sprung around his master's knees he clung and cried in mercy spare o oh, think upon the words of fear spoke by that visionary seer the crisis he foretold is here grant mercy or despair this word suspended harold's mood yet still with arm upraised he stood and visage like the headsman's rude that pauses for the sign o oh, mark thee with the blessed rude the page implored speak word of good resist the fiend or be subdued he signed the cross divine instant his eye hath human light less red less keen less fiercely bright his brow relaxed the obdurate frown the fatal mace sinks gently down he turns and strides away yet oft like revellers who leave unfinished feast looks back to grieve as if repenting the reprieve he granted to his prey yet still of forbearance one sign hath he given and fierce witikin's son made one step towards heaven but though his dreaded footsteps part death is behind and shakes his dart lord william on the plain is lying beside him metalil seems dying bring odours essences in haste and lo a flasket richly chased but jutter the alexial proves ere pouring it for those she loves then walwain's potion was not wasted for when three drops the hag had tasted so dismal was her gill each bird of evil omen woke the raven gave his fatal croak and shrieked the night crow from the oak the screech owl from the thicket broke and fluttered down the dell so fearful was the sound and stern the slumbers of the full gorged urn were startled and from firs and fern of forest and of fell the fox and famished wolf replied for wolves then proud the cheviot sighed from mountain head to mountain head the unhallowed sounds around were sped but when their latest echo fled the sorceress on the ground lay dead such was the scene of blood and woes with which the bridal morn arose of william and of metalil but oft when drawing gins to spread the summer morn peeps dim and red above the eastern hill air bright and fair upon his road the king of splendour walks abroad so when this cloud had passed away bright was the noontide of their day and all serene its setting ray 
End of Canto Fifth Recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com This is Canto Sixth of Harold the Dauntless by Sir Walter Scott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com Well do I hope that this my minstrel tale will tempt no traveller from southern fields, whether in Tilbury, Barouche, or Mail, to view the castle of these seven proud shields. Small confirmation its condition yields to menevels i lay no towers are seen on the wild heath but those that fancy builds and save a foss that tracks the moor with green is nought remains to tell of what may there have been and yet grave authors with no small waste of their grave time have dignified the spot by theories to prove the fortress placed by roman bands to curb the invading scot hutchinson horsley camden i might quote but rather choose the theory less civil of bores who origin of things forgot refer still to the origin of evil and for their master mason choose that master fiend the devil therefore i say it was on fiend built towers that stout count harold bent his wondering gaze when evening dew was on the heather flowers and the last sunbeams made the mountain blaze and tinged the battlements of other days with the bright level light ere sinking down illumined thus the dauntless dame surveys the seven proud shields that over the portal frown and on their blazons traced high marks of old renown a wolf north wales had on his armour coat and rees of powers land a couchant stag strathclyde's strange emblem was a stranded boat donald of galloway's a trotting nag a corn sheaf gilt was fertile loden's brag a dudgeon dagger was by dunmail worn northumbrian adolf gave a sea-beat crag surmounted by a cross such signs were borne upon these antique shields all wasted now and worn the scanned count harold sought the castle door whose ponderous bolts were rusted to decay yet till that hour adventurous knight forbore the unobstructed passage to essay more strong than armed warders in array and obstacle more sure than bolt or bar sate in the portal terror and dismay while superstition who forbade to war with foes of other mould than mortal clay cast spells across the gate and barred the onward way vain now those spells for soon with heavy clank the feebly fastened gate was inward pushed and as it oped through that emblazoned rank of antique shields the wind of evening rushed with sound most like a groan and then was hushed is none who on such spot such sounds could hear but to his heart the blood had faster rushed yet to bold harold's breast that throb was dear it spoke of danger nigh but had no touch of fear yet harold and his page no signs have traced within the castle that of danger showed for still the halls and courts were wild and waste as through their precincts the adventurers trode the seven huge towers rose stately tall and broad 
each tower presenting to their scrutiny a hall in which a king might make abode and fast beside garnished both proud and high was placed a bower for rest in which a king might lie as if a bridal there of late had been decked stood the table in each gorgeous hall and yet it was two hundred years i ween since date of that unhallowed festival flagons and ewers and standing cups were all of tarnished gold or silver nothing clear with throne begilt and canopy of pall and tapestry clothed the walls with fragments sere frail as the spider's mesh did that rich roof appear in every bower as round a hearse was hung a dusky crimson curtain over the bed and on each couch in ghastly wise were flung the wasted relics of a monarch dead barbaric ornaments around were spread vests twined with gold and chains of precious stone and golden circlets meet for monarch's head while grinned as if in scorn amongst them thrown the wearer's fleshless skull alike with dust bestrown for these were they who drunken with delight on pleasure's opiate pillow laid their head for whom the bride's shy footstep slow and light was changed ere morning to the murderer's tread for human bliss and woe in the frail thread of human life are all so closely twined that till the shears of fate the texture shred the close succession cannot be disjoined nor dare we from one hour judge that which comes behind but where the work of vengeance had been done in that seventh chamber was a sterner sight there of the witch brides lay each skeleton still in the posture as to death when dight for this lay prone by one blow slain outright and that as one who struggled long in dying one bony hand held knife as if to smite one bent on fleshless knees as mercy crying one lay across the door as killed in act of flying the stern dame smiled this charnel house to see for his chafed thought returned to metalil and well he said hath woman's perfidy empty as air as water volatile been here avenged the origin of ill through woman rose the christian doctrine saith nor deem i gunnar that thy minstrel skill can show example where a woman's breath hath made a true love vow and tempted kept her faith the minstrel boy half smiled half sighed and his half filling eyes he dried and said the theme i should but wrong unless it were my dying song our scalds have said in dying hour the northern harp has treble power else could i tell of woman's faith defying danger scorn and death firm was that faith as diamond stone pure and unflawed her love unknown and unrequited firm and pure her stainless faith could all endure from clime to clime from place to place through want and danger and disgrace a wanderer's wayward steps could trace all this she did and guerdon none required save that her burial stone should make at length the secret known thus hath a faithful woman done not in each breast such truth is laid but ivor was a danish maid thou art a wild enthusiast said count harold for thy danish maid and yet young gunner i will own hers were a faith to rest upon but ivia sleeps beneath her stone and all resembling her are gone what maid ever showed such constancy in plighted faith like thine to me but couch thee boy 
the darksome shade falls thickly round nor be dismayed because the dead are by they were as we our little day overspent and we shall be as they yet near me gunner be thou laid thy couch upon my mantle made that thou mayst think should fear invade thy master slumbers nigh thus couched they in that dread abode until the beams of dawning glowed an altered man lord harold rose when he beheld that dawn unclose there's trouble in his eyes and traces on his brow and cheek of mingled awe and wonder speak my page he said arise leave we this place my page no more he uttered till the castle door they crossed but there he paused and said my wildness hath awaked the dead disturbed the sacred tomb methought this night i stood on high where hecla roars in middle sky and in her caverned gulfs could spy the central place of doom and there before my mortal eye souls of the dead came flitting by whom fiends with many a fiendish cry bore to that evil den my eyes grew dizzy and my brain was wildered as the elvish train with shriek and howl dragged on a main those who had late been men with haggard eyes and streaming hair jutter the sorceress was there and there passed wolfstain lately slain all crushed and foul with bloody stain more had i seen but that uprose a whirlwind wild and swept the snows and with such sound as when at need the champion spurs his horse to speed three armed knights rush on who lead comparisoned a sable steed sable their harness and there came through their closed visors sparks of flame the first proclaimed in sounds of fear harold the dauntless welcome here the next cried jubilee we've won count whittikund the waster's son and the third rider sternly spoke mount in the name of zernibok from us o harold were thy powers thy strength thy dauntlessness are ours nor think a vassal thou of hell with hell can strive the fiend spoke true my inmost soul the summons knew as captives know the knell that says the headsman's sword is bare and with an accent of despair commands them quit their cell i felt resistance was in vain my foot had that fell stirrup taken my hand was on the fatal mane when to my rescue sped that palmer's visionary form and like the passing of a storm the demons yelled and fled his sable cowl flung back revealed the features it before concealed and gunner i could find in him whose counsels strove to stay so oft my course on wilful way my father witty kind doomed for his sins and doomed for mine a wanderer upon earth to pine until his son shall turn to grace and smooth for him a resting place gunner he must not haunt in vain this world of wretchedness and pain i'll tame my wilful heart to live in peace to pity and forgive and thou for so the vision said must in thy lord's repentance aid thy mother was a prophetess he said who by her skill could guess how close the fatal textures join which knit thy thread of life with mine then dark he hinted of disguise she framed to cheat two curious eyes that not a moment might divide thy fated footsteps from my side methought while thus my sire did teach i caught the meaning of his speech yet seems its purport doubtful now his hand then sought his thoughtful brow then first he marked that in the tower his glove was left at waking hour trembling at first and deadly pale had gunner heard the visioned tale but when he learned the dubious close he blushed like any opening rose 
and glad to hide his tell-tale cheek hide back that glove of mail to seek when soon a shriek of deadly dread summoned his master to his aid what sees count harold in that bower so late his resting-place the semblance of the evil power adored by all his race odin in living form stood there his cloak the spoils of polar bear the plumy crest a meteor shed its gloomy radiance over his head yet veiled its haggard majesty to the wild lightnings of his eye such height was his as when in stone over upsal's giant altar shone so flowed his hoary beard such was his lance of mountain pine so did his sevenfold buckler shine but when his voice he reared deep without harshness slow and strong the powerful accents rolled along and while he spoke his hand was laid on captive gonar's shrinking head harold he said what rage is thine to quit the worship of thy line to leave thy warrior god with me is glory or disgrace mine is the onset and the chase embattled hosts before my face are withered by a nod wilt thou then forfeit that high seat deserved by many a dauntless feat among the heroes of thy line eric and fiery thorarine thou wilt not only i can give the joys for which the valiant live victory and vengeance only i can give the joys for which they die the immortal tilt the banquet for the brimming draught from foeman's skull mine art thou witness this thy glove the faithful pledge of vassal's love tempter said harold firm of heart i charge thee hence whatever thou art i do defy thee and resist the kindling frenzy of my breast waked by thy words and of my mail nor glove nor buckler splint nor nail shall rest with thee that youth release and god or demon part in peace i view the shape replied is mine marked in the birth hour with my sign thinkest thou that priest with drops of spray could wash that blood-red mark away or that a borrowed sex and name can abrogate a godhead's claim thrilled this strange speech through harold's brain he clenched his teeth in high disdain for not his newborn faith subdued some tokens of his ancient mood now by the hope so lately given of better trust and purer heaven i will assail thee fiend then rose his mace and with a storm of blows the mortal and the demon close smoke rolled above fire flashed around darkened the sky and shook the ground but not the artillery of hell the bickering lightning nor the rock of turrets to the earthquake's shock could harold's courage quell sternly the dane his purpose kept and blows on blows resistless heaped till quailed that demon form and for his power to hurt or kill was bounded by a higher will he vanished in the storm nor paused the champion of the north but raised and bore his ivier forth from that wild scene of fiendish strife to light to liberty and life he placed her on a bank of moss a silver runnel bubbled by and new-born thoughts his soul engross and tremors yet unknown across his stubborn sinews fly the while with timid hand the dew upon her brow and neck he threw and marked how life with rosy hue on her pale cheek revived anew and glimmered in her eye inly he said that silken tress what blindness mine that could not guess or how could page's rugged dress that bosom's pride belie o oh, dull of heart through wild and wave in search of blood and death to rave with such a partner nigh 
then in the mirrored pool he peered blamed his rough locks and shaggy beard the stains of recent conflict cleared and thus the champion proved that he fears now who never feared and loves who never loved and evere life is on her cheek and yet she will not move or speak nor will her eyelid fully ope perchance it loves that half shut eye through its long fringe reserved and shy affection's opening dawn to spy and the deep blush which bids its die over cheek and brow and bosom fly speaks shamefacedness and hope but vainly seems the dame to speak for terms his new-born love to speak for words save those of wrath and wrong till now were strangers to his tongue so when he raised the blushing maid in blunt and honest terms he said twere well that maids when lovers woo heard none more soft were all as true Evere, since thou for many a day hast followed harold's wayward way it is but meet that in the line of after-life i follow thine to-morrow is saint cuthbert's tide and we will grace his altar's side a christian knight and christian bride and of Whittican's son shall the marvel be said that on the same morn he was christened and wed end of canto sixth recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com This is the conclusion of Harold the Dauntless by Sir Walter Scott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com And now in we what ails thee weary maid and why these listless looks of yearning sorrow no need to turn the page as if twere led or fling aside the volume till to-morrow be cheered tis ended and i will not borrow to try thy patience more one anecdote from bartholine or perinskiold or snorro then pardon thou thy minstrel who hath wrote a tale six cantos long yet scorned to add a note end of conclusion end of harold the dauntless by sir walter scott recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com